Hey guys, out here again, the most beautiful dog in the world. Um, yeah, we're out nice and early this time, like really early. Started getting up a lot earlier. I wish I'd discovered this earlier in the summer, because it's a fucking game changer. Um, I mean, to be fair, by the time we've gotten up here, it's a little bit hot, but not really. Um, I think walking her in the daytime in the summer is just uh, too much, really. She just sits around panting all day afterwards, so I'm trying to get up nice and early now. After a uh, pretty terrible sleep last night, fucking night terrors. I don't know if any of you guys have those, but I'm prone to just waking up randomly in the middle of the night and doing like a sort of Wilhelm scream, you know, like from some like 1950s Godzilla movie or something, um, over nothing, you know, just some weird shit that's going on in my head. Kind of like sleep paralysis, but not that. I've only had that once, but it's pretty similar. It's a similar feeling. Um, that's annoying, but yeah, anyway, besides the point. So, um, come on Luna. I wanted to talk today about weed and creativity and uh, why I think weed induces creativity, or one of the main reasons at least. Um, and to be fair, it's entirely possible there's like science on the subject that completely debunks my theory or at least, at least um, diminishes it. But it's just something I think about it and I think it's uh, interesting and potentially useful information for both weed smokers and non-weed smokers alike, which I guess is kind of uh, the makeup of my uh, viewer base, you know? Some people who quit weed and uh, some people who still smoke and probably a pr fairly small number who've never smoked. Anyway, um, yeah, because I... I've always wrestled with the idea of like drugs and creativity and I thought in some ways it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, toxic as it were idea um, especially if you have problems with addiction and stuff Luna come on stop sniffing shit it won't taste as nice as you think it does trust me um, it's sort of if you have problems with addiction like to weed or whatever else the idea that it's that it's really good for your creative output is um, I don't know you what you worry about losing that you know you worry about losing a sort of interesting part of yourself an explorative part of yourself maybe if you're talking about other drugs you know not just weed uh, it's kind of adventurous thing and yeah um, and uh, I tried to, I tried to tell myself when I wasn't smoking, I tried to tell myself, you know, Luna, Luna, oi, Luna, Luna, come here. I tried to uh, tell myself, you know, that like, it was the same, and it kind of wasn't. I started smoking again a few months ago, um, very minimally, and... I'm the, the 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 part of me that doesn't want to start smoking every day 24/7 being addicted blah 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 is like very 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 strong now and I feel to be honest personally pretty confident that like I'll never slide back into that um, but anyway yeah uh, in doing so in starting again, because I started on a kind of um, a kind of part-time weed schedule, if you will, I I I I saw a huge benefit to this because I would only smoke like late at night and not even every night, and I couldn't I couldn't ignore the fact that suddenly my creative output was like greatly increased. One thing was I just became much more interested in music and I would smoke and I would just have this urge to work on music 
um, and I just didn't have it as much sober and it's disappointing you know uh, I wanted to believe that it'd be the same and I, you know I had it but perhaps it just wasn't the right time in my life because I've gone through a breakup and whatever else but I just I just didn't have that same urge I have to say to to sort of be around music to be involved with music to mix songs to write songs I still did it just not quite as much not as uh, sort of fervently you know um, and so I uh, yeah, my, my, my output was greatly increased. And I realised, I guess, the crux of this video that I'm taking an incredibly long time to get to, sorry, <laughs> um, is that part of it, there, there was that aspect that it did just make me more interested in music, but, but another part of it was like, I kind of became two people. I kind of had two minds, you know? Um, the way I would look at things stoned was very different to sober and it was very useful to approach things from those two different and separate headspaces uh, and I could sort of make leeway sober that I couldn't while I was stoned and vice versa uh, vice versa I don't know how you say it. Um, and that that was sort of invaluable like because there were certain types of things I would never make sober and there were also certain aspects of the work I would never get done stoned um, and moreover I just think it it was giving me a kind of bigger mind um, and I remember the thing that I think it was Neil Brennan said on a podcast I was listening to years ago Luna about Luna, come on, oi! Stop trying to eat everything. Um, it's all right off the lead. I don't really care because I can just call her. But man, on the lead in town, fucking hell, sniffing every bit of piss. And the thing is, she's big and strong, so you're walking and it's just you just keep stopping and like jolting. Honestly, probably like the experience of trying to uh, watch this video and glean information from it. Um, anyway, yeah. So he was talking about why why uh, black Americans are so much better at stand-up comedy because proportionately they are they're like the best people at stand-up comedy in the world by far if you look at like Patrice O'Neill, Cat Williams, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock although Chris Rock doesn't actually write all of his own material which is a bit disappointing to me and yeah um, a bit of a mark on his credibility but whatever um, oh, surprisingly, I mean, that is actually has been the case with quite a lot of great comedians. Richard Pryor as well had, you know, Paul Mooney writing for him and stuff. Anyway, um, I don't really know what to make of it. Uh, it's one thing with Richard Pryor, but Chris Rock, don't know, man. The way he talks about other people and his sort of general snobbishness to think that he has like four guys writing for him. I don't know, <laughs> don't like that at all. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, and to be fair, I don't really enjoy him that much anyway. Um, he's good, but I don't think he's great. Yeah, but if you, uh, what, what he was saying anyway about these comedians, what Neil Brennan was suggesting may, might be possible is that, I think it was him who said this, that they have kind of a, they have their own culture and they have like a host culture as well. And they're able to flip between those two worlds and utilize both. And to, to make those two different perspectives play off one another and just use it in general to their advantage. And some comedians, you might not see this as much. You might just see kind of their culture more. But if you look, for example, at Dave Chappelle, um, I don't really like Dave Chappelle's new stuff at all. Uh, it's a little bit TED talky for my 
biking and I think he's gone insane to be honest with like egomania um, I can't I can't listen to the guy he's, he's he's unbearable but back in the day before he disappeared came back all fucking swollen shit Luna oi Luna came back all fucking I don't know what she's finding, dead animals and shit. Came up with, you know, whatever. Um, I think he was at that time at his peak, I, th I think he was pretty much the most naturally gifted person to ever be on stage. I wouldn't say the greatest comedian ever. I don't think his output is even as good as Luna, Luna, as like Cat Williams, for example. Um, I mean, he had, you know, Cat Williams has a lot more good specials. Louis C.K. has way more. Luna! Oi! Luna! Sorry, I appreciate it's not very nice to listen to me doing this. I just... <laughs> um, yeah, you get this lovely uh, mountain scenery to make up for it, okay? Oh, shit. Punctuated by my big bald bonds. Um, yeah. So... Anyway, he, but he's a perfect example of this. Um, he kind of uses both. He kind of, he kind of, he kind of operates on your frequency, the viewer, assuming you are just like, you know, not a black American. Um, and then he kind of operates like more on his own frequency, his own like kind of cultural frequency. And he, he uses both like, well, he used both so effectively. Um, and it just allowed him so much more room to do jokes. And you can see a similar thing in rap. Um, it's much easier to rhyme if you have your own dialect. Like, for example, black Americans, like, generally have their own kind of dialect um, and way of speaking. And when you're rhyming words, you can speak in that way or, and you don't normally notice when rappers do this because it's kind of subtle, but you can kind of speak like standardized English and it gives you mu way more options to fit words together and to make words rhyme. Um, Eminem does it a lot as well. Like he, he'll, he'll kind of like, he, you could, you, he, he'll, he'll, he can kind of use a lot of different accents. And if you kind of, again, like have a culture within a culture, then you have way more space to do that. Um, so, yeah, how that relates to weed. Well, I don't think the answer is like, oh, you should just smoke weed because it makes you creative because clearly weed is not for everyone. Luna, clearly weed is not for everyone. And there's a lot of, you know, potential pitfalls and, and I know those all too well and I'm sure many people watching this do. Um, but, I think you can extract that usefulness and find other ways to access it. One, if you're this way inclined, potentially would be psychedelics and things like that. I think that is part of what they do. I've always felt like psychedelic drugs, they don't change you. That's the fear people have is, I don't want to take ayahuasca and be different. And you won't be. It, 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 you'll be the same but it will show you things and it will broaden your perspective and you can choose. You are, you, it's like, it's like going, it's like traveling. It's like going on holiday. It doesn't change you unless you want it to, unless, unless <laughs> it interacts with your personality in some way that meaningfully changes you. It's still you. You're not being kind of eradicated or like replaced with a different person or a different brain. Um, so when you take psychedelics as well, you get this like perspective broadening effect and perhaps also kind of a duality between your normal life, your day-to-day -day life, the real world and, and the uh, psychedelic world. Um, so that's one potential way. I mean, again, even, even also literally traveling. Um, for me, certainly it's been very, uh, the least very interesting um, and has forced my brain to work a bit harder to be in a different country all the time. Been here for like three years now. What are you doing, Luna? Look at her. Come on! Wow. Pure joy. Look at that. An angel. Good girl. Um, 
yeah, it's uh, it's certainly forced my brain to work. And I, I guess there are so many ways you can you can kind of maintain or or access two or more different kind of perspectives or frames of mind or moods or if you look at a lot of great artists or at least even a lot of artists that just get very big whether or not you personally think they're great um, look for example at triple x tentacion right he's got to be one of the biggest sensations in music in recent years um certainly among young people and he was kind of like two things like on the one hand he was like this bad guy like who fucking hell there's a car where the fuck is there a car over here what's that about can't fucking drive here you nut jobs I guess you can um it's me who is the nut job uh yeah he was on the one hand like this bad guy you know who did really bad things but then he also seemed to have like quite a strong social conscience and I guess a lot of people with like mental health problems looked up to him and saw him as like a kind of saviour and I mean, <laughs> kind of mad that whole thing quite an insane like cultural moment that was but but they kind of looked up to him and saw him as like a you know kind of like a fucking angel to them and it was like he was simultaneously viewed as like a devil and an angel which um it's crazy I mean his life was crazy crazy how much he lived in Luna Luna these random bushes alone they're not tasty uh, in like you know a few years mad absolutely mad how that all went down but anyway a lot about his Tupac similar um, he was like you know outspoken on social issues and viewed as a very good person but he also talked about a lot of bad stuff and was conflicted and uh as, as like Kendrick Lamar references a lot in um, To Pimp a Butterfly and he himself has the same thing you know there's like a lot of conflict in his work a lot of conflict between two or more ways different ways of looking at things or thinking about things so uh, to me I think that is the primary reason that weed makes people better creatively it might not be the primary driving force you know as i said when i would smoke i did i did feel more inclined to want to work on music but that's just music that's not including for example these videos which i was doing all the time while i was sober or writing or podcasting for example which generally i'm much better at uh sober but again i mean even then i, I would often use we like if we recorded a couple in a day i'd be like fuck it third one let's just go in high like you know see what it's like and it often produced very interesting and different results and had variety but i want to reinforce you know you don't need weed to uh, obtain this kind of like variety in your creative output it's not that's not the point of this video and because I've got a lot of videos about quitting weed and stuff and I myself definitely, you know, drastically changed my uh, weed smoking habits I and I would recommend if you're considering doing the same please do um, take a fucking year off or whatever, you know um, but so, so I'm hesitant to, to appear to endorse or encourage its use um, and, and I don't think that's, you know, what this does, really. Uh, I think it's just, I think, I think you can find a million other ways to broaden your mind and to have different perspectives, to view things differently, to see things differently, see things from the other side. I think people in general are a bit too, like, polarised now. I'm going to get into all the fucking political shit, but... Perhaps in general it might be better if we were more able to flip between, you know, different modes of thought and just entertain them, just sit within them and uh, feel them out. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, that's how I feel. That's what I'm trying to get into my process, my work, moving forwards. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I don't know. Hope it's made sense. Hope it was useful in some way. I'll give you guys a little bit of the view. Oi. Come on. Amazing, isn't it, Luna? Hey? I agree, yeah. Check out this castle as well. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Good example as well. I mean, I used to be surrounded by fucking grey shit all the time in England and that had an influence on my work now being surrounded by all this fucking beautiful shit all the time for our different different qualities different components so I guess the, uh, the take home here is that variety is the spice of life I could have condensed this whole video into that one simple phrase which is as old as time itself Alright guys, I'm going to shut the fuck up now. Take care, bye.